Hi, Mark. How are you? Excellent. Yourself? Pretty good. Um, so while we were in Hong Kong for the annual meeting, you joined some other INTA members um, to discuss 3D printing for a video that we're going to link back to at the end of this conversation. Um, and now you're going to be co-chairing a conference in March on 3D printing. So why don't you just first tell us what 3D printing is? Definitely. Uh, 3D printing, which is also known as additive manufacturing in the industry, is a process where three-dimensional objects are created by printing layers of material on top of each other based on a digital file. It stands in contrast to uh, traditional manufacturing methods which are subtractive in nature in that they cut away material uh, in order to produce objects. For example, uh, cutting out a shape from a sheet metal. Hmm. Okay, and so why, um, how does this impact the IP community? Why should we be concerned? Uh, I think it impacts the IP community in a number of ways. Uh, there's definitely a number of benefits to the IP community uh, with, with, with regards to uh, shortening of development cycles, uh, greener technology, and so forth. But there's also significant concerns. And I think the main concern is uh, making it much easier for infringers to create virtually identical copies of trademark and branded goods. Hmm. And it's estimated that by 2018, there'll be almost $100 billion in intellectual property losses as a result of 3D printing technology. Wow, so how far along are companies in developing the technology? Te the technology is here. It's, it's already here. Um, 3D printing is used in virtually every industry right now on the manufacturing side and the development side. Uh, as far as its availability to consumers, you know, that technology is also here as well. So for example, HP just announced that uh, it's working on a 3D printer that will print 10 times faster than existing 3D printers. Mm -hmm. They also announced that they're unveiling uh, a new computer, which is available right now, I believe, called the Sprout, which includes a 3D scanner. And the uh, availability of low-cost 3D scanners really is a game changer because in the past, in order to create objects using 3D printing, you needed to have CAD software or design software, which basically required some technical knowledge. However, with the advent of low-cost uh, 3D scanners, the programming and technical knowledge is no longer required. All you do is take the scanner, scan the object, and you can immediately print out the item. Huh. Uh, and actually, you know, another example is uh, catalogs. For example, the Hammaker Schlemmer catalog, which is very well known, has several 3D printer options that are available for delivery you know, this holiday season. So this technology is here and available right now. Right. And it's, it's not just printing, but sharing of design files that's, that's troubling as well? I exactly. There's really um, two aspects uh, of concern to IP owners. Um, the first is obviously the printing of uh, low cost and identical uh, objects which are you know, counterfeit and infringing. But the other aspect is the ready availability of the design files that can create these objects. And up until now, uh, there really haven't been a lot of places where you could access and obtain these files, but that's rapidly changing. So <clears throat> right now there's a number of online maker spaces and <clears throat> what these maker spaces are, are they're online communities where you essentially go to a website you upload a design file and this makerspace will create the object for you. They'll print it out with a 3D printer mm -hmm. and they will ship it anywhere in the world. What they also do though is they host the design files. So other users can access the website, access the design files that are uploaded and either use them to print objects or modify them to create new objects. Companies like Pirate Bay have announced that they will be hosting 3D design files. And uh, a new company, 3D Industries, just announced that they've created a search engine which will search the internet for 3D design files. It's progressing pretty fast, this technology, um, but it's still kind of fledgling and emerging. So why are we having this uh, 3D printing conference now? Why are we choosing to address the issue now? Uh, I mean, the technology is here right now. Yeah. Um, it's not widely uh, understood or known, I think, uh, in the IP uh, or in the trademark and uh, really in a, in a lot of different communities, but it's critical that trademark owners really get in front of this technology. Uh, they're going to see dramatic changes in the marketplace, uh, not only in the availability and accessibility of counterfeit items, uh, but you know, in the availability of design files and other uh, technological advances which are really going to impact their ability to protect their rights. So it's critical that trademark owners understand the technology and understand the legal framework or help to create a new legal framework that will address these issues which you know really are, are, are already here. Hmm. So you think a, a new legal framework potentially is, is in order? You know potentially I think uh, you know right now 
uh, trademark owners can leverage you know, a variety of existing protections that are available. Uh, but as technology becomes more prevalent and spreads into the hands of more infringers and more consumers, you know, it's possible that new laws may have to be created. Yeah. Hmm. So tell us about the conference. How do you plan to, to help, uh, help trademark owners learn about this new technology? What's, the, what's your hope for the conference? Well, I think that the conference is really a very exciting opportunity for uh, trademark owners to gain a basic understanding of the technology and see the ways that it could potentially impact their business. Not only from an IP threat perspective, but you know, also from a manufacturing perspective. And uh, I think that uh, trademark owners who attend are going to get a lot of ideas and they're going to see how this technology really is going to imp impact their distribution and marketing models. And so our hope is that by uh, addressing the various IP aspects, but also business aspects, we're really going to provide a lot of value to all the attendees. Uh, the conference is on March 10th and 11th in New York, uh, March 10th and 11th of 2015. And our hope is that everyone who views this video will join us uh, on those days.